so in this media we are going to learn about tapet clearance i hope uh, many of you must be knowing this okay and many of you must be aware of this tapet clearance okay but uh, what we are going to learn today is what is tapet clearance and when it is needed purpose of tapet clearance why tapet clearance is necessary measuring tapet clearance how to check tapet clearance tapet clearance valve adjustment in this also will come a topic where is ki how to know when because the piston is at tdc okay what are the different methods these are the some uh, this is a separate question even when asked by the surveyor okay so let's uh, move ahead to our discussion when we talk about what is tapet clearance and when it is needed so you see this diagram this diagram will explain you everything okay you see what is tapet clearance uh, this is the rocker arm this is the yoke of the valve this is the valve sheet the valve you can see springs spindles rocker arm bush this is the roller cam and the tapet here okay this is the push rod and then you see the tapet clearance okay now tapet clearance also known as valve clearance okay it is also known as valve clearance so there are few uh, names that is given first is the tapet clearance the valve clearance and then we we also known is that no uh, no it as valve lash okay so it is a space between the top of the valve stem and the rocker arm okay okay understood it allows mechanical expansion and lengthening of the valve stem and push rods as the engine warms up it is taken to ensure positive closing of the valve and for thermal expansion of the valve i gave you in a nutshell what is this tapet is all about okay now we'll see here as per the text tapet clearance also known as valve clearance valve lash as i also said is the small gap between the rocker arm and the top of the valve stem that is yoke engineers can observe and adjust tapet clearance only when the valve are in closed position so this is important what are the conditions when we take tapet clearance is that it has to be in the valve has to be in closed position and the engine is cooled engine is cooled at at the compression stroke this is important okay these three conditions as for when you uh, check tapet uh, generally indicators you need to keep in mind what are those that uh first as shown in the engine's manual the process should be taken after a certain number of running hours these differ based on the engine model okay uh, say and if you notice irregularity coming from the misaligned tapet lens like noise coming from the rocker rocket rocker arm this is spelling mistake sorry we discuss all issue resulting from incorrect tapet clearance in the following aspect purpose of tapet clearance allows a small expansion gap of valve stem and push rod to accommodate effects of heated engine okay if this is not done the valve will not sit correctly as the engine heats eventually result in power loss irregularities in the engine and other issues why tapet clearance is necessary the clearance between the valve valve stem and the rocker arm is very important mainly for two reasons what are those it accommodates the thermal expansion of the valve axis that is spindle that is caused by the heat of the ship's engine when is in operation it ensures the closing of the ship valve regardless of temperature and working condition knowing what is tapet clearance why it is necessary will help you to maintain the right timing through the delayed or early opening of the inlet so this is the reason why it is important so for this reason we measure tapet clearance measurement so how do we uh, measure this tapet clearance so we measure two things that is increase or decrease of the clearance so it has to be exact okay uh, it can neither be more it can neither be less so depending on this there is a note we notice the time of the opening and closing of the valve because of this tapet clearance if the tapet clearance decreases means if the tip tapet clearance is less then what will happen the valve will open sooner and close later this is because 
the rocker arm stays connected to the valve for a longer period of time with less clearance. We get a bigger contact area between the valve stem and the rocker arm. In turn, this keeps the valve open for longer as the rocker arm pushes the valve down for a longer period of time. If the tappet clearance increases, the valve will have a delayed opening and an early close. So here what is happening, the valve will open sooner. Here it will be delayed opening and an early close. Since there is more clearance, there is a smaller contact area between the valve stem and the rocker arm. As such, the valve remains open for a shorter period of time but remains closed for longer. Which Symptoms of valve clearance problem. When tappet clearance decreases, the valve will open sooner and close, uh, close late. You may observe air leaks in the combustion chamber leading to less available air for proper combustion. The power and performance of engine will decrease. Fuel consumption of the engine will increase. The temperature of the exhaust valve will increase. In some scenarios, the valve could stay open for an extending period of time causing decrease in the engine's compression pressure. If this happens, you may notice exhaust valve gets burned and a spike in the turbocharger fouling. So these are the symptoms, these are the problems that will occur when the tappet clearance decreases. Now when tappet clearance will increase, the valve will open later and close sooner. The maximum lift of the valve will decrease. Reduction in scavenge air that is power decreases due to less heat energy being delivered to the engine's turbocharger. Problematic removal of exhaust gas, not proper function. Repeated collision with the rocker arm can cause damage to the valve stem. Common tell you may observe noise that is if left unchecked can lead to damage on the working uh, working surface. How to check tappet clearance? So this is important uh, again. Uh, so it, it, you must refer to the manual to start make sure that you take all the necessary safety precautions these are important make the engine is cool and check in the valve are in closed position ensure that the piston is is at the top dead center what i told you in the beginning that this can be a separate question ki how do we check that the piston is at tdc or bdc by the, these are the different uh, methods like these are the different techniques uh, by which we check First is the marking on the flywheel. So it is clear. There is nothing in this to be explained. Now second comes the marking on the fuel pump. That is the fuel pump method. So and camshaft fuel. So here you see there is a window that is given on the fuel pump which is showing okay plunger going up and down. So this window shows what that the plunger is going up and down. If you have observed fuel pump you will be able to identify it. Okay there is there are cut marks on the body based on these cut marks you are able to uh, so uh, so i'm giving you what are the methods we are not going to discuss exactly in depth these are the cut marks by which you can identify position of the valve cam okay so where is the valve cam if the push rods are not obstructed as mentioned ever with both valve closed at the point so the push rod should be free okay so when the push rod is free, that means that the valve is at TDC. Sorry, the piston is at TDC. Okay. Now we have tile gauge method also. Here what we do, we remove the injector. Okay. There is a, uh, uh, we remove the injector and then what we do, dial gauge is inserted. Turn engine by turning gear. We turn the engine by turning gear. Okay. Pointer moves in one direction and stops and starts in reverse the moment reverse start is tdc okay so is me kya kya hamne? we remove the injector we inserted the dial gauge we turn the engine by turning gear the pointer is moving in a one direction as soon as it starts moving in a reverse direction that is the point when the piston is at tdc this is the dial gauge method that is mentioned over here now we have camshaft method okay camshaft method here we have crankcase opened up and then visually checked if piston going up or down so then we are visually checking it that the piston is going up or down this is a we are opening crankcase even for inspection also then we can see that time okay that is a uh, camshaft method then we have crankcase method crankcase uh, crankcase opened up and then visually check if the piston is going up or down 
okay in camshaft we have camshaft window actually sorry uh, in camshaft in crankcase we have crankcase we are opening in the camshaft we have camshaft window opened up when the exhaust and the intake valve roller is at the bare uh, base circle then the unit is at tdc so in camshaft method what we are doing we, we are opening the window actually we open the window and then we uh, we see exhaust valve uh, mm, is going up or down exhaust and the intake valve roller is at the base circle so when it will be at the base circle then the unit is at tdc okay then we had the crankcase method where we visually see and then we have valve spring method if flywheel shown two unit uh, okay uh, two unit then open cylinder head cover them cover then the valve whose spring is loose is at the TDC now the whose spring whosoever spring will be loose that will be at TDC okay so that is the aspect and the point over here now if any of the above are not in TDC don't proceed to the next step this is the turning gear when the indicator called the open to set them at TDC now this is the top dead center 6 degree advance and 6 degree retard okay now four stroke engine usually contains six to eight units therefore the flywheel should not indicate two units set at tdc if you want to check whether a unit is on the compression stroke instead of the power power stroke you can manually turn the push rod of the tdc indicated unit if the push rod is free it's at the compression stroke if the push rod is tight it's at the power stroke avoid this one okay so this this is the two thing means two unit will be at tdc if the push now from the push rod you can see if the push rod is free it's at the compression stroke now if the push rod is tight it's at the power stroke avoid this one at this point you will have to find filler gauge of multiple thickness size try to place them one by one on um, between the valve clearance and the rocker arm to find the ideal size usually the manual of the manufacturer should speed up this process by indicating a range of sizes once you find the filler gauge and that fits perfectly you will know if the distance between the valve stem and the rocker arm is large or small then it should be okay valve tappet clearance adjustment once you have performed the check and demonstrated you can now proceed to valve tappet adjustment to do this you will need once again need use a filler gauge in this case the ideal size depend on the valve for the inlet valve choose a gauge with 0.4 mm thickness for the exhaust valve choose a gauge of 0.5 mm thickness okay so generally exhaust is uh, clearance is more than the inlet uh, now you comment why this is so okay this can also be a question by the surveyor for this one review the manufacturer's manual as well as the size often depends on the engine similar to the course of action you took previously ensure that all safety precautions are taking the piston is set at the tdc and engine is cooled down then loosen up the lock nut of the rocker arm to place the gauges based on the manufacturer's manual place the recommended gauge between the valve stem and the rocker arm and then adjust the tappet clearance by tightening or loosening the nut under the lock nut okay the filler gauge should not feel very tight in the clearance instead it should be able to slide through the gap okay to effectively measure tappet clearance during the stage you can use one of the following that is these are the instrument summing up uh, you should not uh, you should now know that the tappet clearance and what it role plays in the engine the small gap between the rocker arm and the valve stem is primarily focused on providing space for the heat expansion and can easily be adjusted based on the symptoms might you notice if the tappet clearance decreases the valve will uh, open open sooner and close later if the tappet clearance increases the valve will open later and close sooner okay when adjusting tappet clearance try to always use the manufacturer's manual in conjunction with your knowledge okay so these are the different different aspects so we have discussed today that is that is about uh, tappet clearance and why it is taken and how it is taken and uh, what are the different different uh, methods by which the tappet clearance is measured okay what are the different different methods by which the uh, sorry uh, we know that when the uh, you know this is at tdc okay what are the different different ways that we can identify because generally we take it at tdc only Okay, so I hope it is clear for you. Thank you for your patience listening. Thank you so much. All the very best.